A Lexington murder suspect makes a bombshell claim in court as he argues why the charge against him should be dropped. As the debate continues over a cross on a water tower, a Wilmore woman hopes to send a message with a whole lot of smaller crosses. How a group of Central Kentucky teenagers is using benches to keep a friend's memory alive. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. It's something a Fayette County judge told us doesn't happen very often during a routine hearing. But today, she allowed a man accused of killing his boyfriend to take the stand and explain why he thinks the murder charge against him should be dropped. Lexington police say Matthew Donahue stabbed his boyfriend dozens of times at the couple's home back in January. But today, Donahue claimed he did it in self defense. Kristen Kennedy is at the live desk with our top story at six. Kristen. Jennifer Donahue told the judge in court today he felt emotionally and financially stuck in that two year relationship. It's when he started with Schumacher when he was 18 and Schumacher was 38. He said he had tried before to break up with him. I expressed my concern, and every time I brought this up, Todd became um, hostile. And um, from that point, um, things did escalate. I, I found out that I was I, I was HIV positive, and we found out that I had contracted HIV from one of the people. Matthew Donahue told his story of what happened with his boyfriend Todd Schumacher last January in the hopes a judge would agree his actions were in self defense. He said in court that their fight about their deteriorating relationship escalated when Schumacher saw Donahue grab a knife. He sees that I'm standing with the, there with the knife and he is coming after me. Um, remember, he looked. He looked infuriated that I even made the attempt to grab this knife. Investigators testified in court, too. They said they ultimately made the decision to charge Donahue with murder because he made up a story about intruders coming in and harming them first, and that he stabbed Schumacher between 50 and 70 times. Too many times to indicate a crime of self defense, according to investigators. Donahue was confident Schumacher would have killed him if he didn't kill Schumacher first. If he would have gotten a knife out of my hand, he would have butchered me with it. He would have killed me with his knife. After Donahue's testimony, the judge overruled the motion to dismiss. She said a jury needs to decide if it was self defense or murder. At the live desk, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Donahue will be back in court at the end of the month. A date for his trial has not yet been set. New tonight, a Union College student faces charges after police say he made a threat on campus. Police say 18 year old Connor Kelly admitted writing a threatening message on the wall of a restroom in the campus library. They say the message read, quote, Kill them all tonight and mentioned the student center. Police say Kelly admitted a similar threat found on EKU's campus last week played a role in him doing this. Kelly also plays baseball for Union College. He's charged with terroristic threatening. Tomorrow, classes will resume at Eastern Kentucky University one week after that threat there. Investigators are still trying to figure out who's responsible for the threatening message found in a campus restroom. They say they've received dozens of tips. EKU also moved last Thursday's football game to Georgetown College as a precaution. EKU leaders say police have increased patrols on campus and that will continue as classes resume. The university is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in the case. New tonight, lawyers for Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis say the marriage licenses she issued to same sex couples are valid, even though she altered them. In a new court filing today, her lawyers say that the licenses are valid because they're recognized by the state's highest elected leaders. Davis removed her name and office from the licenses, replacing them with a note that the licenses were issued by a federal court order. Lawyers for the ACLU want a judge to order Davis to reissue the licenses or, if she won't, appoint someone else to do it. The city's mayor and many people who live there want it to stay, but the Freedom from Religion Foundation says it may take legal action to have a cross on Wilmore City Water Tower removed. The cross has been on the tower for decades. The tower itself sits on Asbury University property. As Sean Moody tells us, one woman is now helping people show their support if they want the cross to stay where it is. Sheila Nagy has been outside all day working hard. I'm going to look like a fine mess, ain't I? 
These are just a few of the crosses that she's made over the past couple of days. Another one's done. She and her husband, Lewis, were upset when they saw the letter from the Freedom from Religion Foundation asking the Wilmore mayor to take down the cross that sits on top of a water tower. The group says it gives the impression that the city endorses Christianity. It's from Madison, Wisconsin, the main office. What are they worried about what's going on in Wilmore? We saw the letter and I said, take down our cross, we'll put up, we'll put up more. The water tower and cross originally belonged to Asbury University, the private Christian school in town. The city owns the tower now and the cross has remained. The mayor says he won't remove it unless he gets a federal order. Nagy's crosses have been pretty popular. She's made more than a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> They're going. He Appreciate needs them. three. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. That's way more than she anticipated. You know, I didn't ever figure this would be this like this big. I never figured this. We may end up having to make a couple, two, three hundred. I don't know. She wants each cross to send a message. We're just making a statement that we agree with our city, hmm. that we, the people, want our cross to remain. In Wilmore, Sean Moody. I'm done with this one. WKYT. And she and other cross supporters plan to have a rally at the Wilmore IGA Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Lexington City leaders paid a public safety consulting group to see what can be done to make the city's fire stations more efficient. And this afternoon, the Urban County Council discussed the results. As we first told you yesterday at 6, the group's study recommended consolidating fire stations on Marino and West Jefferson Street downtown, adding a new fire station in Masterson Station, and moving fire stations to new locations on Newtown Pike and Tates Creek Road. Monique Blair has the latest. Jennifer, that study cost the city about $68,000, and today the consultants explain their results to council. One of their suggestions is to consolidate this station here on Marino Street with the station on Jefferson Street. Another recommendation was to add a fire station to the Masterson Station area, and plans for that are already underway. With the suggestion to close down or consolidate different fire stations, Lexington Fire Assistant Chief Harold Hoskins explained to me that this is not a matter of cutting any jobs in the process. The consultants also reviewed ways to make the EMS department more efficient, and one of the suggestions was to implement a policy where ambulances would adapt the use of their lights and sirens based on a more critical protocol. That suggestion is already being implemented on a sort of experimental basis. We began 1st of October uh, putting the decision on an emergent or non-emergent transport on the paramedic based on their assessment. Uh, and as Chief Brown alluded to, uh, you know, it becomes a resource management issue. When we're all sitting in Nicholasville Road, we're running out of ambulances. And so we're watching that very closely to see what's the effect. Is it going to cause us to need more ambulances? Now today, council members wanted to know the cost of each recommendation that was made, but that information was not a part of the study, and it will take the city a few months to determine. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. The council plans to continue talking about the recommendations while coming up with a plan to make emergency services more efficient. New tonight, Lexington Fire Department leaders have agreed to lower the minimum insurance requirements for private groups or neighborhoods wanting to shoot fireworks. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, the requirement will drop from $5 million to $2 million. The change will take effect immediately. At least one Lexington neighborhood had to cancel its plans for 4th of July fireworks last or this year because the insurance requirement was too high. Now, the rain we had last night brought in some cooler air, but we still have plenty of sunshine, or at least we did out there today. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell joins us with an early look at a pretty nice forecast. I mean, overall this week we are in pretty good shape. It's not until we get to, toward the end of the week and the weekend arrives that the real chill digs in. Out there right now, you're right, Sam, we're still seeing some sunshine mixing in with some cloud cover still holding on for you throughout to most of central and eastern Kentucky. But just a fantastic day overall, even though we're about uh, 10, 15 degrees cooler, depending on your location compared to yesterday, still a very nice day. We're still holding on to mid 60s around Lexington. Pockets of low 60s showing up around Covington into Maysville, and the coolest air is still coming for the folks out across southeastern Kentucky. They've been able to avoid it for a while now. We compare yesterday to today, and there you see that good 10 to 15 swath really coming into play north 
and along Interstate 64. That's where the coolest pool of air is uh, currently located, of course, compared to yesterday, and it'll dig deeper and deeper. But the focus of the forecast isn't to the chill that we have out there today. It's this. It's the potential for the first frost coming this weekend. And we're around average. This is about when we see it. On average, actually, we see it by tomorrow for Lexington. But it looks like we really get our best chance going into the weekend. There's a small chance early Thursday. We'll take a closer look at that coming up in just a few minutes. Tonight, friends of a Franklin County teenager who died from encephalitis are making sure that his memory lives on. 16-year-old Bradley Kamick was diagnosed with the disease in August after collapsing on a soccer field. He died a few weeks later. Bradley was a student at Frankfurt High School. Today would have been his 17th birthday. As Victor Puente tells us, new at 6, his friends have come up with a lasting tribute to honor him. These caps may just be plastic, but in the coming months, They'll become a memorial. 16 year old Bradley Kamick died in September of viral encephalitis. It, it really hurt a lot because we lost a family member. In this tight knit school, the loss of Kamick turned a school project into a way to remember a classmate. When Bradley passed, it became much more than just a recycling project. Their original goal was to collect enough plastic for one bench. Now they're planning two one at the high school. Another at the elementary school he attended. They felt lost after, mm -hmm. after the loss of Bradley. You could just tell they just didn't know what to do. So this gives them a chance to give back. It's not just schools in Frankfurt that are helping them collect that plastic. They tell me they've received caps from multiple counties. Scott County showed up at the soccer game with a bag of caps for us. Huge, big bags. Now it's not just plastic they're collecting, it's memories. They hope to have both benches in place by next April. In Frankfurt, Victor Puente, WKYT. If you'd like to donate plastic caps or money to help with those benches, you can call Frankfurt High School. New tonight, we're learning about the overtime costs for Lexington police to handle traffic control for last week's Luke Bryan concert. Now, the city calculated more than $28,000 in overtime costs, and the company that organized the concert has agreed to pay the city for that overtime. As for fans with tickets who could not make it to the concert because of the traffic backups, organizers say they have come up with a solution. Those fans have until Friday to apply for a refund, and we have more information at WKYT.com. Tonight, dozens of new flags are blazing the way on Lexington's Legacy Trail. The city has installed 61 flags called Blazes along the trail. Each one was inspired by its location on the Legacy Trail. City leaders say the flags are part of the Legacy Trail Public Art Master Plan. They say that calls for adding more works of art that make the trail legible and encourage more people to explore it.